You're not to look at the camera. You can look at okay. me. You can look at the walls. anywhere but the camera. Look at the good Lord, but you can't look at the camera. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's start with. Can you tell me about the first thing you remember of coming to Detroit? Yeah, I didn't like to come to Detroit, but my sister had a uh, love affair with somebody that my mother thought was terrible, and so she moved us out here. My mother worked in a, frater in a sorority house and a fraternity house in the University of Nebraska. And as I say, I thought I was part of the sorority, you know. The <laughs> girls spoiled me rotten. And uh, they, uh, I, I wasn't real happy moving to Detroit, but we moved here anyway. What kind, what kind of town was Detroit? Was Detroit a jumping town? Was it a quiet town? Was it exciting? I don't know. We never, we never, uh, I never had an opportunity when I was little to, you know, to make any, a lot of friends. I'd go to school and come home. <laughs> but uh, it was pretty nice, pretty nice town. Tell me about, uh, now you went to work at the Rouge. I went to work at Rouge, I think it was 1929. And uh, at first, I worked in a glass plant. I made windshields. And windshields ain't funny to lift, you know. <laughs> and sometimes we would make five and six hundred a day, which ain't funny. Windshield every five or six minutes. And uh, that was pretty hard work. And then I got active in the union. But I didn't, I, I never, I was, sometime the chairman of my my unit but I never did go to work for the you know okay. the UAW when when you were working on the windshield line yeah. at the Rouge tell me if I looked up and down the line what kind of people would I see working on the line every kind of people men and women few women we were the first women that worked at, uh, as I say in 1929 we went to work at the uh, glass plant, but we were the first group, the women that, came, that went. They have a lot of women now, but it, <laughs> we laid <laughs> we laid a place up for them because uh, they didn't have any women before we came. And uh, what are the kinds of people, what was, kinds of races would there be there? Hmm? What kinds of ethnic people would be there? What, Every kind you can mention. Every kind you can mention. There were a lot of Polish people, and uh, comparatively few black people. We were about the first black people in the plant in 1929 in in the glass plant. It was supposed to be a kind of an Eli job, you know, and it was too good for black people. And uh, then, uh, at first, I made cores. You know what a core is? Well, a core is what you make out of sand and wires to, to, and then they pour, it's a, a core is really what they pour over, to, you know, the, the oh, to make engines. To make engines, yes. To make, uh, yeah, to make the engine blocks. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They made cores. And the men didn't like that job, so they had women doing it because it was, you had to stick. That's it. That's it. Okay. What would happen was uh, that, that okay. What would happen was that the uh, the men resented the women coming on on a plant because they didn't think they were strong enough to lift. You know, windshields pretty heavy. And uh, if you're working with on the other side of the line with somebody that's wishy-washy, you, <laughs> you get yourself all cut up. But uh, actually, they they uh, after we they saw we weren't uh, actually dumb, so we 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 did. As a matter of fact, uh, we did better work than they did when we got to it because we were going to show them that they were wrong in the first place. Did you have to do anything special with the foreman because you were a woman? Oh, no. Mm -mm. 
No, I, we, we've always had pretty good foremen. Tell me exactly what did you do? Explain to me what your... The line is, is, uh, is uh, well, you know how wide a windshield is. Well, she's on one side of the line and I'm on the other side lifting glass. But the glass comes in, There's, there are people who put the glass on the line, the next people put the vinyl in between, and the next people put the top on, and the next person cuts all the extra vinyl off around the line. And then it goes into an oven and gets to be a windshield. <laughs> but they're pretty heavy. Windshields are heavy. Were you allowed to, uh, were you allowed to talk? Oh, sure. Really? Yelling at you, they saying everything else. What did you sing? <laughs> a union songs. <laughs> <laughs> we were very, we were, we were very unionized because uh, we, they, in the first place, they didn't want women on it, on the glass. They didn't think we had any sense, you know, and uh, they didn't feel like they would want all of us cutting ourselves up. But we, they, they found out that women were better on the line than the men were, because the men would stop and smoke and everything else, and when glass would be coming down the line, and they'd be lighting their cigarette and all that stuff, and they, they found that women were better off than the men on the line, because we, we had, oh, maybe six or eight people. Was there any in there? Did you, did, did, did you see the line in there? In no, that? I didn't see the line. You know, we have some movies of the line, though. Oh, we you have. We found some old movies. Of oh the well, then you don't. You know what I'm trying to say. In it. Yeah, and uh, then walk all the way from where we work in the glass plant, to Gate Four, which is about a mile. And sometimes we had to work overtime. It'd be midnight and all that stuff. It's, it's kind of different. Did you ever see Henry Ford? Oh yeah. Tell me about yeah, that. Yeah, he. he he came, he came through every once in a great while, but we weren't allowed to talk to him or anything. We didn't stop him or say anything to him. I never said anything to him, but I've seen him many times. Hey, they, 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 the Ford family would come through quite often. Was the place kind of buzzing when they came through? No, no. They did, we'd know when they were coming because everybody would start cleaning up everything. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell me that once, once again. Tell me you knew when they were coming. <laughs> We'd know they were coming because they would, they would start uh, sweeping the floor. There wouldn't be allowed a pin on the floor or anything when they were coming through. So then we'd straighten up and fly right too. Never know when they were going to show up. But they, the Ford family came in quite often. When you first started working at the Rouge, what did what did Henry Ford represent to you? Did he was he an image of success or good or evil or did he represent anything? Oh to you? no, I liked Henry Ford. He was nice people. He really was nice people. And uh, he'd come through and he'd speak. You know, he, he would pass by like a freight train passing a tramp. He'd come back and say hello and and stuff. He was nice. He was yeah. really nice to work for. What about Harry Bennett? Well, he was a bastard. He, he thought he owned the company. He would throw his weight around all the time. And no, I don't think anybody liked Henry Bennett, Harry Bennett. I doubt it very much. I don't know where he is. Is he still in the company? He's, he's gone. He's gone. Well, he, he needs to be gone from the company. Did the, when you're working on the line, did the line always go at the same speed? Except when we'd slow it down. <laughs> we'd slow it down every chance we got because it was, it was hard work for eight hours lifting every two minutes a big heavy windshield. How did you slow it down? Could you stop it. Stop it and get a minute's rest. <laughs> but 
then would the company crank it back up? Oh yeah, they'd come to say, here come the foreman. That's the only way we could see the foreman, for him to see the line stop. He'd come over, what the hell's wrong with this line? You know, real mean. When we talked on the phone, you told me about your your sister and your mother, the kind of work that they were doing. Can you tell me about that? This is while you were working at. Yeah, my mother did day work. She'd go like to your house today and his house tomorrow and her, his house the next day. And uh, she did day work, washing and ironing. My mother was also a very good cook. She, When we lived in Nebraska, she was the cook in a sorority house for several years. I lived in Lincoln. We lived right on almost on the campus of the, Link of the, on the University of Nebraska. And I wish we'd have stayed there so I could have gone to school there. <laughs> but um, we moved out here in Detroit, and uh, I can't remember what time, what time we came here. I think it was something like 1929 or something like that. And then I got this job at Ford's, and I had never seen quite so much money. I was just, I thought I, thought I was wealthy. Bought myself a car. Matter of fact, I bought myself a car every year. And uh, I got active in the union. What kind of car did you buy? Ford. I, I was mad at everybody else who didn't buy a Ford. If you're going to work for Ford, I thought you ought to buy a Ford. And uh, my car's sitting over on the lot there now. I got a car, but it's about four years old now. I, I haven't been able to buy a car since. But it runs. It's good. When you were working at the Ruse, did you work every day all year round? Uh-huh. Were were Not Sundays. Uh -huh. Not Sundays. We, we've had very little Sunday work. And uh, a lot of times we didn't work on Saturday, too, but we, we, um, we didn't work on Sunday. Did you ever get laid off? Yes, not often. Because, see, you can store windshields. You can store them for years. And uh, when times would be rough and the plant would kind of go down a little bit, why we, we'd still work because we could always store the windshields. We made all the glass, the, 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 the glass in the doors and the glass, you know, all the way around the car. But I worked mostly on windshields. I guess I'm big and fat and healthy. And <laughs> I worked mostly windshields the whole time I worked in a glass plant. Can you tell me what it sounded like in there? <clears throat> It wasn't as noisy as you'd think, unless somebody dropped a windshield on the floor. But it wasn't very noisy. It wasn't too noisy. What did it smell like? Yeah, they, uh, you ought to go and go out there and look at the, at the plant out in the glass plant out the forge. It's something to look at. You wouldn't believe your eyes, because it's mostly women working on it. Well, and I haven't been there for several years, but. Uh, I'm sure that they work women half to death like they always do. Do you remember the hard times, the, the Great Depression? Yeah, I remember very, very, very well the hard times in the Depression. We didn't have enough money to... Was, we had a house that we were able to keep. But other than that, we didn't have very much time and then very much money to... We had enough to eat. You can tell from that I haven't missed too many meals. But um, the, uh, it was, you know, hard times. And uh, my sister did day work. She'd go to your house and clean, and then her house tomorrow, and his house next day. and. She, she did day work, and uh, we managed very well. 
I'm going to ask you to not rub your dress because it makes a noise that he can hear. Can you hear that noise? Oh, I'm sorry. He's got ears like a coyote. <laughs> Okay. Did you ever hear of, uh, who was the mayor of Detroit in those days? Do you remember, do you remember Frank Murphy? Oh, yeah, I remember Frank Murphy very well. Yeah. Yeah, we were very fond of Frank Murphy. For some reason. I've always been pretty active in politics. Was he, uh, did you feel that Frank Murphy was your kind of guy, was on your side, was, was a... Uh-huh. Was he a friend of the working man and the working woman? Was I he think an enemy so. Of the working man and working woman? I think he was very, very, very uh, fond of the working class people. Mm -hmm. oh, I want to go back to Henry Ford for a minute. Um, did you ever stop to, in those days when you were working at the Rouge and you saw Henry Ford once in a while, mm -hmm. did you ever stop to think? To imagine what kind of house Henry Ford lived in? No, it didn't, it didn't bother me at all. I thought probably he had a big ranch-type home somewhere, but I didn't know about it. I didn't care about it, to tell you the truth. Have you heard that? I don't, I don't, if, if, if Edsel Ford used to come, I, I never did see Henry Ford. Edsel come through a lot, but Henry never did, never did much traveling in the in the plant. Tell me, tell me some more about Harry Bennett. I want to hear more about Harry Bennett. Well, Harry Bennett, I never and I never came in contact with him, but from uh, people that did, they didn't like him. He was generally disliked for some reason. I really don't know why. I really don't know why. Not not just black people, everybody disliked him. <laughs> were there, between the black people and white people in the Rouge, were there racial tensions between the blacks and whites in the plant? No. 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 After he got to working together, we'd be friendly just like we were the same age and the same place and neighbors or something. You know, we, we, we never did have much tension at glass plant. No, no, no racial uh, differences, you know. How did you, how did you get your job at the group? Did you have to go wait in line or did you go to your church or how did you get your job? No, I went out to the, the uh, employment office till they tired of seeing me coming and they gave me a job. I just kept going out there. I'd go out maybe twice a week, and uh, finally they gave me a job. I just was determined I was going to work at Ford's, because that was big money in those days. Tell me again why you wanted to work at Ford. Well, I figured that, that uh, I could make it, my life a little more See, my mother had two girls. My sister was nine years older than me. And she did a lot of day work, and she I figured that I could help her if I made some money so she could stay home maybe one or two days a week anyway. She worked there all the time. She worked for some of the wealthiest people in the city. In the Depression and the hard times, do you think that, that women were particularly important in helping the city survive and helping people survive? I think so, because, see, uh, as I say, women wanted somebody to come and, and keep, them, keep the house clean rather than <laughs> keep it clean themselves. And uh, it was just one of those things. You, you could almost always find a job doing housework. So, so women were key to survival? Yeah, that's true. Can that's you tell true. me that in your own words? <laughs> well, actually, uh, the, the, in the first place, women don't, wanna, don't like much doing housework anyhow. 
And uh, if they could get somebody to do it for a little or nothing, they'd hire them. Good. Let's cut for a minute. <clears throat> Ms. Jeffers, I'm going to have you sit up, if you would. Hmm? Can I, could I have you sit up straight in your chair? Sure. Do you mind? Yeah. There you go. Mm. How did you hear about the stock market crash? How did I hear about the stock market crash? Well, I read the, I, years ago, I started reading the paper religiously every day, so I, uh, naturally, I would get it right firsthand. Do you remember, did the stock market crash have a big effect on things? No, it had a big effect on things, but it didn't have any effect. When, what year was that? 1929. It didn't have any effect on me at all. See, they, they were the only money that was coming in the house was my mother, who did day work, and me, who worked at Ford's, and my sister, who did day work. And uh, we always had a very nice house, piano, everything. Well, we, we, everything we thought we wanted, we'd work hard to get it. And. Uh, I really didn't suffer during the Depression, not by any means. What sort of, uh, in, the, in the hard times during the Depression, even though you didn't suffer, what kind of food did you all Excuse eat? Me, we're we're going to have to change film. <clears throat> Ms. Jeffers, in the Depression years, can you tell me what y'all, the kinds of food that y'all ate in your home? We ate good. We, uh, as I say, my mother worked day work. And when she'd come home, she'd be loaded down with, she'd stop at the store. And I'm going to have you. Make some noise. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, well, she would uh, stop on the way home and, and, and vegetable market, and we'd we eat a lot of beans now. <laughs> a lot of people eat a lot of beans in the Depression. And, uh, but, but we got along very well. As you can see, I haven't less, missed very many meals. I weigh over 200. Do you remember in 1932, there was something called the Ford Hunger March, when a, a lot of unemployed people went to the Rouge factory? Do you remember that? I can't remember that, because we didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't, uh, the glass plant didn't participate in that at all. Uh -huh. Do you remember hearing we were, about it? Haley Bell. Do you remember, do you remember hearing about uh, when all the people got shot? at the Rouge plant at the Ford Hunger Park. Oh, yeah, I heard about it, but uh, it didn't bother me because I, I wasn't at, at any, anywhere near it. What did you hear about it? In the paper. Yeah. And cut. Room tone for Miss Edwards' uh, interview.